Hello everyone and welcome to another video on mask tools. In the recent update for version 1.6 there were several new nodes added, and in this video we're going to be focusing specifically on the material shader node. Now the simplest way to define what the material shader node is is to say that it replaces the principled BSDF shader. It has all of the essential inputs for PBR textures, but it also allows you to have a little more control over some of these post-processing effects, such as emission. You can also quickly add other effects, such as ambient occlusion and paint alpha transparency as well. And before we begin, I'd like to thank all of the users who have left really wonderful reviews for the add-on. Mask Tools has a growing number of users, and many of which have said really wonderful things, so I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Uh, but if you'd like to see a full tutorial on the add-on, I'll leave a link in the description below. And in this example, I'm going to be using the Sci-Fi Rifle, which is a very low-poly object, which means it doesn't have a lot of geometry, at least by today's game engine standards. The idea here is to get all of the detail out of the texture work. The first mask base node is separating two sets of PBR textures, that is this gunmetal texture and this machine paint texture, and it's separated by a mask. The second mask base node uses one of Mask Tool's metal presets. And for the mask, I use the Edge Detect node to create these worn edges. But because the Edge Detect only works in cycles, I baked this to an image texture so that it can be used in Eevee. And if you have questions about texture baking, don't worry because we'll be doing a lot of it in this video. And now the third mask base node is adding all of the stencil detail around the dials and the little arrows and so on. Most of the stencils used here come with mask tools, but you can of course create your own in any image editing software. Next in this layering system of nodes, I added a bump painter node. And if we take a look directly at the mask, we can see the areas that I've painted on to add that surface detail to the model. The bump is also inverted so that rather than protruding, it seems to be inset. And there are some other details going on here as well. The cavity detail, for instance, is typically used to add grunge elements to the lowest point in the bump, so that you could simulate the collection of dirt within these cavities. Here, however, I've used the Adjust Cavity Detail slider to bring that detail up around the edges, which now simulates edge wear. I've also used the Add Mask Value slider to darken up those inset areas. And now finally we have one last mask base node that doesn't have anything plugged into it yet. And then of course everything then is plugged into the material shader node. Now with the node wrangler add-on enabled you can just control shift click to scroll through and view all of these various outputs. Now under the main texture outputs there is an output for ambient occlusion. In order to view this you have to check the ambient occlusion box in the properties window. Then the sliders can be used to turn the effect on or off or to adjust the strength. And with the ambient occlusion output, you can use it to bake a separate ambient occlusion texture. However, ambient occlusion can also be added directly to the color map. Below all of these outputs, there are two vector outputs. This is the vector normal, which shows all of the bump and normal map detail and also a displacement output, which you would use for creating more high poly models or detailed models using height maps. But for more information on that workflow, you can find in the previous video, which again, I'll leave in a link in the description. In this video though, we'll just be painting some emission effects and then baking all of our texture maps. So let's go to this final mask base node that hasn't been used yet, and we'll create two textures. The first one I'll call rifle underscore emission. And because I'll be using a little bit of bump, I'll click this 32-bit float box, and I'll double the size of the texture to 2048. Now I can plug this directly into the mask input. Now I'll create a second texture, and this one will define the color of the emission. So I'll just call this uh, maybe rifle, or let's just call it emission color. And I'll keep the texture size the same. This will be plugged into the color input. Now finally the mask output on that node will be plugged into the input that controls the emission on the material shader node. Next I'll go to the texture paint workspace and make sure that I'm painting on the correct texture which is this rifle emission 
And by clicking on this little tab, I can enable face mask selection. And in the viewport overlays, I'll also turn on wireframe, which will help me to see which faces I want to select. Now, because most of the mesh is separated by seams, I can just hover over those areas and type L, and this will select them. Now, because I'm using the fill tool, I'll just fill in those areas with a value of white, and this will add emission to those areas. This becomes more obvious when I turn on the bloom effect in the properties window and then increase the strength on the material shader node. Now I'll switch from the paint fill tool to the paint brush, and that will allow me to paint some finer detail onto the model. First, I'll make sure that I'm painting in a value of pure white and I'll change the stroke method from space to line and also adjust the curve and turn the Y symmetry on so that I'm painting on both sides of the model. Now with the stroke method switched to line, I can just click and drag these straight lines out, which makes this infinitely easier. Oh, let's make sure to turn off our face mask selection. Now we can paint anywhere on the model. So I can just click and drag this detail, and I'm just going around the border in some of these areas. It's quite a lot of fun seeing the bloom and emission effects added as you're painting. So we'll just do a few more areas here. And actually, before we continue, let's turn the emission off for a second so that I can demonstrate something on the mask base node. If we turn the bump on and then invert that bump, uh, now let's go back to the material shader and add just a quick color to, to view it, and then turn the strength back up. What you can see is that there's like a brighter effect along the edges, some sort of like rim detail to that emission, which I think looks quite nice. So now I'll paint within some of this detail from the bump painter node. Okay, maybe just these final two. And then once this is finished, we can start working on the color of the emission. All right, so I think this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and switch those settings back. So we'll take the stroke method back from line to space. And we'll switch to the emission color texture. Now we just need to plug the color output on the mask base node into the emission color input on the material shader. And I'll use some contrasting but complementary colors to paint this emission, like this blue that we were using before, but also add like a really deep orange as well. Okay, and I think that those colors look really nice together. And once you're finished painting your textures, you need to make sure that you save them. But now that we're finished with our painting, we can start baking our textures. Now to do this, we need to go into the Cycles Render Engine as baking is currently not available in the EV Render Engine. Okay, so now that I'm in Cycles, I'll Control Shift Click on the Material Shader node to view the color output. Here I can adjust the strength of the ambient occlusion which will be baked into the color map. So in order to bake a color map, you need an image texture to bake to. So I'll type Shift A and add an image texture. And I'll just call this rifle underscore color. And then click OK. Now it's important that the model be selected in the viewport and the texture be selected in the shader editor. In order to save time with baking, I'm going to take the render samples all the way down to 1 because we're only baking the color map. This may not give the best result because we are baking ambient occlusion along with the color, which does use samples. But for demonstration purposes, this should be okay. So when you're ready, just click Bake, and then your texture should appear in the Image Editor. And if we open up the little drop-down, we'll notice a little asterisk next to Image, which means that it's not saved. So you need to make sure that you save that image. Now I'll just move that color map to the side and create a new image texture. And this one I'll just call rifle underscore metallic. And then click OK. Now anything connected to the viewer node will bake. So if we just control shift click on the material shader and make sure that our texture and object are selected, we can still just bake this under combined and it will bake that metallic map. And now I'll save this image as well.
I still need to do my roughness and my normal map textures, uh, but Blender has a better solution for that than just adding those images to the viewer node. So I'll create a new texture and I'll call this one rifle underscore roughness. And I'm going to make sure that I have this 32-bit float box checked. I'll also switch the color space to non-color. Now this time we won't be adding the roughness map to a viewer node. Instead we'll be viewing the entire shader through the shader output. So if I come over to my settings, I can switch the bake type to roughness and increase my render samples, but still keep them rather low. So I'll just set them at 25. And now I'll click bake. So I can save this image and basically follow that same process to do the normal map texture. So I'll type shift A, add an image texture, call this one rifle underscore normal. And once again, it's important to keep that 32-bit float checked and change the color space to non-color. Now I can change the bake type to normal, but before I bake that texture, I'd like to demonstrate one more thing because you're not limited to that material shader being the final material output. So if I add a principled shader, we see that the outputs on the material shader correspond with the inputs on the principled BSDF. And because there's already a normal map node built into the material shader, you can plug this directly into that principled shader. And this also gives you access to other features such as subsurface scattering, clear coat, and so on. The thing that I'd like to add is the bevel node, which can be dropped right into the normal input. This is an invaluable tool for objects such as this, which are intended for game engines. Now these very hard edges appear rounded and smooth. And now we're ready to bake that normal information onto a normal map, which we can do directly from the principled shader. So let's reselect that texture, make sure that our object is selected and our bake type is already set to normal. So if we click bake, we'll get our normal map. Now I'm ready to add all of my baked textures to the principled shader. And I'll start by adding the normal map. So I'll type shift A and go to vector and add a normal map node and plug it into the normal input. Now I'll drag that normal map texture in, make sure that it's set to non-color. And this will allow us to see how much texture detail was added to this very low poly object. Now you can see all of the normal map detail along with the bump detail, but the most impressive part is all of those soft beveled edges. Now let's add the remaining texture maps and see what the final result looks like. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, then subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and let me know what kinds of tutorials you would like to see on Mask Tools. Don't forget to check the description below for the previous video on Mask Tools, which is a full tutorial on the add-on, and there will also be a link to the Blender Market page where you can purchase it. That's it for this video, guys. I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.